Hilltop Hoods, Matt, Barry and Dan, how are you? Doing excellent, thank you. Very well. It's very nice of you to stop into Townsville. Why are you here? Just here to see our buddies in Townsville and announce our playing of the V8. And last time I think you took uh, or you performed with Illy, who I believe a little birdie told me that uh, he was performing with you in Bendigo. He made a little appearance. Yeah, he was there with um, Mashton Kuchter. Excellent. Um, which is harder to say than it seems. Mashton Kuchter? Mashton Kuchter. So, yeah, we couldn't resist the opportunity to get the friend up. So, yeah, you got to do exercise with us. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, if you're in the same spot, why not, right? Exactly. So, it's not the first time you've been here. What have you been up to? We've been in about a 50-metre perimeter of this place. <laughs> <laughs> had a beer at the bar, had some Chinese yeah. at the restaurant, had some sleep upstairs. Yeah. Just a bit of media, just talking, talking to the locals. Talking to the locals, I like it. Did, did the hill in an air-conditioned car. <laughs> you know, make heroes of ourselves. We look like some people out there working hard. And the view, worth it. It was a banger. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, are you, have you done a hot lap yet at the V8s? I did a hot lap years ago. Uh, we played the 500s in Adelaide uh, with Rick Kelly. And um, I don't know if I enjoyed it or not. It was half enjoyment, half terror. And then I got up and quietly went to a corner and threw up afterwards. Oh, lovely. <laughs> in a onesie. Don't forget, in a onesie. In a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. It's sort of like a splash guard situation. Yeah, amazing. So uh, you guys just played Groovin, obviously. Didn't come to Townsville this time. Very sad about that. Yeah, we were We're sad making too. it up to you. Yes, exactly. With the V8. So there you go. We made it here anyway. They couldn't stop us. Exactly. And I think there's going to be a big top this year. So Hilltop's in the big top at the V8. So nice. Be pretty cool. Groovin was like your first shows back in what two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. How, how was it dusting off the COVID cobwebs? We we're looking up our lyrics online <laughs> for the first rehearsal. Yeah, so that sets, it was a bit rough. That sets a picture. It was a bit rough. <laughs> um, oh, we got there though. We, luckily, we got rid of the cobwebs before we got up on stage. But it's yeah. a little bit nerve wracking after not doing it for two and a half years to a large festival crowd. Yeah, like, I mean, talk about diving into the deep end, right? Yeah, just yeah. started with a small show, <laughs> yeah. back, grooving the mood. Intimate little show. So, uh, you do have a new single, Show Business. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. This is so funny, this is like old school TV, we were like... Yeah, got the single Dana there. White. <laughs> um, show Business is a track we did with Eamon. Um, he's a soul singer. Depending on who you talk to, he's famous for his recent soul albums or for his R&B anthems in the early 2000s. Um, yeah, it's just sort of reflection on the show business. We had a lot of time to reflect over the last couple of years and ups and downs, ins and outs, that sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys did release a, a great single during uh, COVID at the start of it two years ago. Can you believe? I'd say it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I would By say it's, it's good too. Uh, and I mean, that track has raised how much money now for Support Act's Roadies Fund? Not sure. It's over 300000 now, yeah. though. Yeah. I incredible. You've yeah. got the call last week that it tipped over three hundred. so very proud to be a part of that. Amazing. Amazing. And uh, if 2020 was an unshaved ball bag, what would we call 2021? <laughs> a much more groomed ball bag. <laughs> a manscaped. Yeah. A manscaped ball bag. I'm looking to get back into the... I'll, I'll stop that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also got the uh, 10th anniversary issue of Drinking from the Sun out as well. Look at that one we prepared earlier. Bang. Fantastic. Uh, so... I did see also you are doing a little something with Restrung. Yeah, we're working on another Restrung. So when's that going to come out? When it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've that's got a lot of arrangements and, and stuff, but it's a long process. Particularly, it's an, a normal album is a long process with us, so yeah. Restrung albums are really long process. Well, we've got half the arrangements in the bag from the Great Expanse songs that we're including in it um, and working on all the new ones. Amazing. Yeah. So, Amazing. Yeah. And uh, I mean right before COVID you guys were you guys were smashing it like 2019 performing what MCG 85 85,000 people with Eminem like yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, that uh, was an insane thing to be a part of. Yeah, so I, I heard that they had three types of chips backstage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kid was impressed by the uh, catering. Yeah, I mean, everyone's dad gets up on stage and, and plays 85,000 people. No, everyone's no dad deal. gets a turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also, I remember seeing you at the Arias in 2019. You guys have kind of... I'm not going to say that you're old, but you've kind of... <laughs> but you just did. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to say that. <laughs> you've kind of pioneered um, Australian hip-hop in terms of bringing it from the underground to the mainstream. Was that something that you ever envisaged when you started out? No, not at all. I mean, we just sort of did it for, did it for kicks for a very long time. And we had mentors as well that were sort of making underground music at the time. The sort of that put us on um but no it was it was it was never even the dream to bring hip-hop to the mainstream it just happened which is yeah. which is a nice story yeah it happened organically yeah and when you head overseas because when you came back for the arias you were here for what a day before you flew back over to the u.s and canada i think two two days yeah yeah like that's pretty crazy um so like when you go overseas and you're playing smaller crowds compared to playing huge festivals here or the V8 supercars, how does that feel? Um, you know, like everything is relative, I guess. Like, you know, when you like you get used to things back home, sometimes you can be at a spot uh, where we're less well known overseas and sort of you know, you've just come from arena or something like that to a more sort of humbling place. But that's also sort of part of the fun of traveling overseas to places you haven't been or you're not as well known. It's you sort of get to have that ride again that you had at the start of your career where it's kind of like exciting and fun and in the back of the van and cheap motels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Contrast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does it uh, help you stay humble? Uh, I've got... Uh, a wife for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the kids, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah, nothing to keep you more humble than kids. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm and, my kids. Wife. Man, my wife. Yeah, he, she judges all of us. Okay. Um, <laughs> but my kid, like my five-year-old, she kind of gets embarrassed by um, the music thing. So. Oh really? Yeah. My nine-year-old's just cottoned on that, like what I actually do, because I didn't do it for so long through COVID. And now he's like, the kids at school will say that you do this. <laughs> and he's getting a bit of, bit of street credit. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard going back on tour when you've spent so long at home? Yes. Yeah, yeah it is. Hmm. Um, it's a love-hate relationship being on the road, like there's massive highs, but you miss home, which is quite the low, especially with young kids. It's hard. Um, so, yeah, I like being on the road for one or two nights and then I'm ready to get home. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the beauty about touring these days. You can. Yeah. It's all weekend work, really. Yeah, yeah at so. the moment, particularly in Australia. Mm. Yeah. Not sure what overseas will look like yet. Any when, plans? We, when we go back, yeah, we'll go back. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it'd be a long time between touring. So. We just announced a, an arena tour, which I was at first devastated that you weren't coming to Townsville, but you, you are making up for it. There you go. Um, so, will the Townsville show kind of be a dress rehearsal for that? Because you're pretty much going straight out. We're, we're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're going to go big. I mean, like, you know, the Supercars concert's a big show, so we'll go go all out. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I wouldn't look at it like a dress for us. Well, I think, I mean, the Supercar show is like, a, it'll be like a festival set for us, you know. It's got that sort of vibe, um, which is sometimes quite different to one of our own shows. Um, we play different songs sometimes, but, but it'll have all the bells and whistles. All the bells and whistles yeah. and all the fa like all the family favourites because it is a family friendly show. So be family friendly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got an explicit sticker on that uh, vinyl, so <laughs> yeah, we'll have to disclaimer. watch the words. Uh, and no kicking children like the show business uh, video. You don't. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't guarantee Matt won't kick children. Well, well, we'll try to keep him away from the kids, but um, look, we... <laughs> what a way to end an interview. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking forward to seeing you guys back here in July. It has been way too long, and uh, hopefully we will see you back here on a headline tour very, very soon. Absolutely. Awesome. Looking forward to coming back. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Jade. Thank you. Cheers.